There's so many amazing stories that we're sitting on that are untold. There's so much amazing talent that we're not tapping into. And, and when Pete and Patrick Neat approached me with this book, I, I, I was just kind of, I was so excited by that idea. You know, why can't we do that classic detective noir film and do it in London today? This is a very London film to its bones, and I'm assuming that for all three of you, that status as a London film was something that was important to you from the start. I'm going to start with you, Pete, because you're sitting next to me. Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've, this is the first film I've made set in London, um, and it's special because I think it kind of captures the soul of what it's really like to live here. You see lots of movies about London, and none of them seem to be the place I live in. Okay. This felt like it could be that. Billy? Yeah, I agree. I sort of longed to, to work in London, so, and I think it perfectly sort of, I don't know, it's uh, uh, it's, it's the London that I know, so it felt comfortable, and, and the period was so great as well. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, and also harking back to that late 90s moment. Yeah, it's awesome. You're feeling a little bit old. It's good to be back. <laughs> you know, it's a great time. How about you, Riz? No, I hate it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was when the answer I was looking for. People, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's always good to. Yeah, I just feel like I I, I just want to make loads of films that that reflect the, the 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 London that I know and the Britain that I know. I don't you don't often often see it on screen or on TV. I know I bang on about it, but it's something I feel quite passionate about. There's so many amazing stories that we're sitting on that are untold. There's so much amazing talent that we're not tapping into and. And when Pete and Patrick Neat approached me with this book, I, I, I was just kind of, I was so excited by that idea. You know, why can't we do that classic detective noir film and do it in London today? And if, you know, the London that we that, that that we live in right now and the Britain that we live in right now is full of crazy stories. It strikes me what must be quite difficult making a film about London is that it's a moving target. Like physically, it's transformed so much just in the last few years, and it's obviously the movie touches on that with things like gentrification. And I wonder how much of a challenge that was, because in the time that it's taken to get the film up onto the screen, I mean, London has physically changed. Yeah, I think when, when Patrick wrote the book, it came out just after 7-7, seven, seven, and even then was London was different. And I think we've, we've, had, we've had to adapt and change the script as the eight years it's taken us from the book to getting it made. But I think that's part of the fun of telling a story. You want it to try and reflect where you come from. I think, I, I, I kind of agree with Riz, I think it's like, you don't, I mean, there's lots of talk about diversity in filmmaking, but it's, it's diversity of storytelling that we don't really have much of. You know, it's like, until we start telling stories about all kinds of people, then it won't matter who's in them, because the stories won't reflect the real world, and I think that's that's what we need to do more of. Um, and that's why this is exciting for me, this story, because it feels like it's a story that wouldn't normally get told. I mean, tell us a little bit about, about that journey from page to screen and how tricky it was to get the film made. Um, well, it wasn't tricky to get it made because we had people support the idea of it early on. But as ever, you just try to... The idea of a script changes. Um, I think I met Riz like five years before we made it. It was like five years, wasn't it? We yeah. were talking about it. And it just takes that long to raise the money for a, you know, a small independent film. Um, it's just the practicality. It wasn't like it was especially difficult. I think that's what raising money for small films that you know aren't about posh people in Notting Hill who can't decide whether they love each other to to get <laughs> off the that ground. That sounds like a viable movie. To get off the ground. Yeah, maybe <laughs> someone will make that one, or maybe someone will make lots of them. Um, um, but yeah, those are easier to get off the ground than this one. Sure. And Riz, I mean, were you on board throughout that process? Because you know you've had the odd job here in the last couple of years. <laughs> Um, well, to, I mean, the thing is, is that Pete kind of approached me to be in this film, uh, yeah, like years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. Before we really even yeah. had a script. No one was approaching me to be in films five years ago. <laughs> so I kind of was bound to him out of loyalty and gratitude. Uh, as much as I tried to squirm my way out of it <laughs> over those years. But... Um, yeah, I, I was on board that whole time, and I actually knew Patrick's writing. And those of you who haven't read any of his work, I would really advise you to check it check it out. Um, he's I knew him as a spoken word artist, actually, and he runs Book Slam. I don't know if any of you know that that club night Book Slam, with a stand up comedy, music, and 
spoken word night and and um yeah so when it was like him and also Pete whose work I knew and loved I yeah I just wanted to be in, involved from from then sure I mean, Billy, I mean, for you, Shelley must be a particular challenge because she's not in every scene, but it feels like every scene that she's in is really pivotal. Right? That character doesn't get a lot of downtime, so you have to be sort of on point at all times. Yeah. <laughs> in my head, it's a love story. It's a right. totally different thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there's lots of things going on, but I, I really loved her. I thought she was a really sort of normal chick with a tragic past, and there's this love-loss situation, and... I don't know, I just sort of really fell for that. And and then the opportunity to work with these two and in London. <laughs> For all of those reasons, it was really appealing. I mean, the chemistry and the rapport between your two characters is obviously really important. And I wonder if you'd come across each other, if you'd met before the film, or how long you had to get to know each other before shooting. We'd met before. Yeah, we met, like, else. in passing. Yeah. Um, we had, like, a couple of people in common. Yeah. But um, we didn't, we really didn't work know. together. Or, yeah. No, we had like a Diet Coke and yeah, and then a f an hour of rehearsal. Yeah, we had a Diet Coke and she just jumped straight into like, so did you like garage music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I guess yeah. this is like in the 90s, isn't it? She yeah. was like, yeah, wouldn't it be good if it was that? And we kind of bonded over garage. Yeah. Thank you, Mike Skin. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Could you tell that it was working on set? Because I mean, I'm assuming that the budget wasn't so generous that there was, you know, you weren't you weren't playing with huge amounts of time here, so you're having to work quite quickly. I'm, sp I'm imagining on that first couple of days on set, you know, you're just trying to get a sense of whether this is actually, after such a long period, getting it off the ground, whether this is working. Could you tell? Um, maybe I'm just so arrogant. I just <laughs> know it's <was. laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I thought it was working from like turnover. Okay, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I think we had a great story, um, and I was blessed with an extraordinary cast, really. Someone, I remember when I first started out, the first said to me, first AD, they, they kind of organised the schedule. It didn't happen on this film. When I first started out, I said, the only thing that can go wrong now is you can fuck it up. And thankfully, I didn't fuck it up. But I think you just have to put the ingredients together and let people do good stuff and not get in the way. Sure. And I managed to not get in the way too much, I think. I mean, we've talked yeah, about. Yeah, you were great. <laughs> no, I, I want some sort of fun. It's a great on way to work on set. It was a brilliant way, wasn't it? It was really yeah. loose and and um, and also this. I think there's something that comes from having, you know, not a great deal of time and you know, not an enormous amount of money. Everyone's really sort of agile and, and mentally there and present and really, really working together. I think that really benefits a shoot myself, anyway. I'm sure it's a nightmare for you. No, it's, it's very, it's, it's very really quick because it's all handheld. It was, it was really. And it's very fast. Yeah. But I quite like that. It was dynamic. It's slightly anarchic because I don't really plan it, I just sort of make it up. I mean, did you get the chance to play around with things when you were on set? I mean, it, or is that the script pretty much up on screen? Or were you experimenting with things as you were going along? No, we just let it live in the moment. I think sometimes things would come up and we would just try them out if they worked. I think if you're true to the script, then things can grow from it that are not in it. Um, it's like anything. I think if you create, if there's a truth in the moment, then hopefully actors can take it somewhere where the script hoped it might go, but didn't quite manage it. And I think we were lucky that, well, I was lucky that these guys totally invested and became the people so that, so that it kind of lives its own life. I mean, in the script, the past and the love story weren't nearly as passionate and as powerful as what you see that's all down to them really to, to, to the young actors that played them in when they were younger and to what these two guys did in the present it wasn't as tender and as necessary as it was on the screen it kind of when I watch it I find it really electric and that's kind of comes from the chemistry that people develop with each other I mean, we talked about it as a very contemporary movie, which it is, but also you're obviously playing with all those old kind of film noir motifs. And I wonder if you went back, any, any of you really, and went back and looked at those old movies. Because when Billy, you're playing a femme fatale in some ways, you know, and you're the noir hero with the cigarette hanging from your lips. But did you go back and look at those old Humphrey Bogart movies or ignore all that stuff? I feel like I'd already seen a lot of them. Um, I'd, I'd seen a couple. I'd seen enough to kind of understand what we were going for. LA Confidential, Long Good Friday, Chinatown. Um, uh, you wanted me to watch, I watched Mona Lisa as well. Mm. But I don't know, I, I kind of, I, I knew that we were kind of doing that, but we weren't kind of, 
trying to be completely faithful to that kind of film. We, we wanted to put a twist on it. And part of the twist was, or part of the kind of how we wanted to contemporize it was setting it right here, right now, with everything that that entails when you really try and engage with the reality out, you know, out your window. Um, and the other thing that we, I think Pete really wanted to do and something that he really brought to the table from really early on was he said he wanted to, it to have real soul. Yeah. And he brought, injected it with a lot of warmth. And the film went from being a kind of thriller to being a story about ghosts, mm. um, about <coughs> missed connections and fading family and um, relationships that might have been. And it became a very kind of soulful film. And that really is, that, that was really from Pete. He kept talking about how much, and sometimes I remember we'd, we'd kind of talk on set and I'd say, but, but isn't, isn't Tommy, and I think it was quite early on, right, mm. right from that first day, it was like, would he, sh would he let that show? And, and Pete would say, um, no, he, he's trying desperately not to, but he's like broken inside, you know? It, so it's really about your vulnerability. And being, you know, open, allowing your vulnerability to, you know, wear, allowing yourself to wear on your sleeve. Yeah, it's funny you'd say that because the movie, it feels like it's, when you step back from it, it's, it's about all this stuff. It's about London, it's about the change in London, but it's also just about the characters. And it's like this, almost like this character study at the heart of it. I think that's, I would assume, speaking to the audience, I mean, that's how, why you connect with the film is actually, as you say, because of the love story. I yeah, there's one, there's one scene in it that never changed from eight years of script development, and that's the end scene. That stayed like the that. Christmas scene. Yeah. Okay. And that was, to be honest, that was the reason for me to make it. That, that slightly weird, messed up family celebrating some strange, messed up Christmas <laughs> kind of symbolised what the whole point of the story was, really. As it couldn't be more dysfunctional, but actually couldn't also be more loving. And it kind of showed, in a way, Tommy's journey was to kind of move on from the people he thought were his friends when he was a teenager to this strange family he had now in the present. And in a way, that's kind of a metaphor for living in a city, I think. It's never what you think it's going to be. And that's kind of why I wanted to make it, I think. Because it felt like it was about what actually living in a city is like, because it's the weird connections you make with people that make living in London so exciting. That's what actually living in a city feels like. It's not really about what you do with a camera, which is what most people think filming in London is about. It's actually about the soul of the people. Um, that's why I've lived here for 30 years and don't intend to leave. There's something special about that that you can't quite... And that's why I made all those slightly facetious comments about you know, what you do with a helicopter over Canary Wharf and all that stuff. But it's partly because they seem to miss the point to me. Because I always get asked, what's it, what, how hard was it to film London? And I go, it's not that hard, really. In fact, it's really easy. It's just you get a really good story about people's emotional life. And I think that's, I think Riz is right, that it became a really soulful story that we all kind of fell in love with. And like Billy said, it was almost a love story, a kind of love story for London in a way.